The Desaru shipwreck, circa 1830, shows a decline in the South China Sea trade. By this time, the porcelain being made in Europe was cheaper than the Chinese ware, and fewer ships sailed for China. Chinese porcelain did, however, maintain its Southeast Asia market, where more traditional designs were still appreciated. If nothing is done, and done soon, there may come a time when there will be no history to write about. UNESCO have repeatedly said that shipwrecks laying on the seabed for centuries can lay there another century or two. There would be no hurry to excavate the shipwrecks. That's not true. Twenty years ago in this fishing village in Endau, there were two trawlers of that limited capacity. Today there are 400 of these boats with that maximum capacity and each one of them is out there spoiling uh, one wreck site after another. Just one example is the Turian shipwreck we discovered in 1996. There were then an estimated uh, 100,000 pieces of 600-year-old pottery. We went back to dive that site and there were no more than 10,000 pieces there at that time. 90,000 pieces have been dispersed by fishing trawlers and will never be found again. So, uh, sorry UNESCO, but it's got to be done now. For centuries, trading ships sailed the Nanhai, now called the South China Sea, as they followed the maritime equivalent of the Silk Road that connected China with the rest of Asia and beyond. By the 15th century, Malacca had become the most prosperous trading port along that route. All along the route, Chinese ceramics and other goods like silk were traded for regional indigenous goods that were regarded as luxury items in China. The Asian maritime silk route depended on the monsoon seasons. Ships sailed from China and Southeast Asia during the northeast monsoon Returning six months later, their sails full of southwesterly winds. Winds often fraught with many dangers. Storms took their toll on these ships, sailing in uncharted waters with limited navigational aids and dangerous coral reefs caused many to perish. Fires were a common cause. War, piracy, and sometimes the bad condition of the ships themselves may have led to their sinking. Evidence suggests that the Desaru may have already been an unstable boat built in a very slipshod manner. In contrast, Sten Schostren's Cadenza was a power boat designed to high-tech perfection. A superb research vessel fitted out for the relentless and continuous task of surveying, diving, finding and recovering. Prior to the discovery of the first shipwreck, the Royal Nanhai in 1995, many hours of research were needed. Sten decided to concentrate his search on a wide corridor of sea between the islands of Ridang and Tioman off Malaysia's east coast. The corridor was then divided into smaller blocks and then began the slow and painstaking search with a little help from a good friend, Cadenza. The team had to wait two years before their dedication was rewarded with the first find, the Royal Nanhai. During this time, they found 130 steel hull wrecks. Sad reminders of the recent past. The O-16 is one of those, a World War II Dutch submarine that sank after encountering a Japanese minefield.
Sostren's relationship with Malaysia's Department of Museums and Antiquities has been one based on a genuine passion for maritime archaeology and Asia's ceramic developments. Sostrand also understands the importance and necessity for Malaysia to have its own maritime archaeology department. The uh, Malaysian government is very supportive of the type of work we do. They uh, have in fact given us uh, a limited group of Malaysian nationals whom we train in all aspects of marine archaeology. This group is now uh, certified divers. In October we will uh, bring them out and show them survey and survey techniques and eventually we hope uh, that they will be able to look for and excavate their own shipwrecks. Uh, in view of the fact that uh, they plan to build a maritime museum. It would be very interesting in future to see what Malaysian uh, marine archaeologists can come up and to contribute to that museum. Malaysia's budding maritime archaeologists also get their practical training on the land-based operations that are an integral part of professional maritime archaeology. Yeah, but it's a loose bank. It's not attached. No attached. We don't know where it comes from. The Malaysian Maritime Archaeology Exhibition at the Department of Museums and Antiquities in Kuala Lumpur is an excellent exhibition worthy of a visit. It showcases seven of the nine shipwrecks recovered by Sostrand. The findings of these seven shipwrecks are also published in the catalogue Maritime Archaeology and Shipwreck Ceramics in Malaysia. Today, Malaysia stands at the forefront of ceramic marine archaeology, partly because of these findings. The collaboration between Sostran's company, Nanhai Marine Archaeology, and the department means that Malaysia now possesses a wealth of data from a series of shipwrecks of indisputable provenance. This is because they have been surveyed, searched for, discovered, and recovered by one man, one company. <laughs> 